The film begins with four family members, Father Pi Teek, Mother Chung Suk, Daughter Pi Yoon, and Son Pi Wu. They've been living in a small semi-basement in Seoul. They must fight hard for their existence. Because their financial situation was terrible, they created pizza boxes to help manage their household. However, this work did not cover all of the household costs. One evening, they are visited by Ki Woo's friend Min Hyuk, who offers them a scholar's rock from his grandfather's collection, which is intended to be the wealthiest amulet. He also offers Ki Woo a job. Since Min Hyuk will be moving overseas shortly, he wants Ki Woo to take over his tutoring of the daughter of a wealthy family. Ki Woo has strong English skills after serving in the military and taking the university entrance test four times. Ki Yoon may fake his documents to seem to be a university student since she is skilled in design programs and his employers are unlikely to review them closely. The wife is relatively simple-minded, so Min Hyuk's proposal should suffice. Ki Woo arrives at the Park family's home, which is located in the city's affluent neighborhood, dressed in his finest attire and carrying the fake papers. After being granted entry by the housekeeper, Moon Gwang, he is interrogated by Choi Yen Go, also known as Mrs. Park. As expected, she hardly looks at the papers and believes Min Hyuk's word, but she wants to sit through the first class to ensure Ki Woo is a decent, suitable guy. Ki Woo will be teaching his daughter Da Hai, who first seems bashful and is shocked when Ki Woo clutches her wrist. But since it is merely a gesture to comfort her while she is having difficulty learning the exercise, she rapidly warms up to him. Mrs. Park feels happy with what she has seen, so she hires Ki Woo and pays him handsomely. After the first session, he meets her son, Da Song, who has joined the scouts and is fascinated with playing the Indians. Ki Woo was a scout before, so he understood. When Mrs. Park showed him her son's drawings, Ki Woo had an idea. He starts raving about Da Song's work as if it were a masterpiece. And when Mrs. Park says that she needs a new art professor since none of the previous ones lasted more than a month, Ki Woo suggests his cousin's classmate Jessica, a highly skilled art therapist. He's referring to his sister, who shows up for an interview the following day, claiming to be Jessica's instructor after reading some art therapy and psychology material online. While Mrs. Park speaks with her. Kiwu tutors Dohai, who is envious of Kiwu's friendship with the art professor. Kiwu tells her he is not interested in her, and the two of them kiss. Returning to Kiyum, she convinces Mrs. Park to allow her to teach Dasong his first lesson alone, and in the end, she impresses her by demonstrating how well behaved her son is today. She also shows Mrs. Park hints of distress in Dasong's drawings, detailing an event he had in first grade. Mrs. Park, sure her son needs art therapy, hires ki at an exceptional salary. Later that day, she meets the family's father, Park Danak, who offers his driver, Yoon, to take her home. Yoon insists on taking her to her home, but to maintain the illusion, she asks him to drop her off at the train station since she sees someone. During the ride, ki has an idea and pulls out her panties to hide them in the car. The Kim family starts eating better due to their children's increased wages while they plot their next move. Meanwhile, Mr. Park discovers the panties in the car and suspects Yoon has been having lovers and probably ingesting drugs since no one in their right mind forgets their innerwear in a car. When ki departs after class, Mrs. Park uses the opportunity to inquire about the driver, so she tells her about Yoon's attempt to take her home instead of the station. Mrs. Park chooses to fire Yoon as an excuse not to make a controversy, and ki steps in, 
suggesting a mature employee is more trustworthy before offering her uncle's former driver. Of course, this guy is Kitik, a former driver. He goes for a test drive with Mr. Park, who is satisfied by his impeccable manners and extensive knowledge of the city, allowing him to find his destination without needing GPS. His driving is so excellent that Mr. Park does not drop his drink when the car turns, so he employs him immediately. The last part of the plan is the most difficult. Moon Guang is a tenacious, clever lady who has worked in that home since a previous family held it. He Wu learns from Dai that peaches are not allowed in the home because Moon Guang is allergic. So he and Kiyong toss beach fuzz at her while she isn't looking. Moon Guang goes to the doctor for a checkup since she doesn't think it's allergies, and Petik is also part of the plan. He snaps a photo with Moon Guang in the backdrop and gives it to Mrs. Park, explaining that he overheard Moon Guang mention she had TB. When Moon Guang coughs due to allergies at home, he applies ketchup to the tissues in the garbage to make it seem like she coughed up blood. Mrs. Park, embarrassed to have a sick worker in the home, has Kitty agree not to tell her husband about it, then dismisses Moon Guang with an excuse, informing Mr. Park she left. Mr. Park becomes concerned about the absence of cooking and cleaning in the home. So Kidik offers him the card of a prominent agency where he nearly worked, allowing Mr. Park to tell his wife where he got the idea. This organization claims to offer families trustworthy staff, but it is another scam by the Kims. The phone number on the card is a second number Kiyun obtained for this purpose, and when Mrs. Park calls, she pretends to be a secretary requesting a large amount of official documents. Eventually, Chung Suk is recruited as the new housekeeper, and the Kim family moves in. Da Song sees they all smell the same, but they realize it's not the soap. It's the smell of their old, inexpensive flat. The Parks go on a camping vacation and leave Chung Suk to look after the home. So as soon as they depart, the whole Kim family comes over to stay. They take up all the rooms, eat all the food, and drink the costly wines. And Kiwu even takes Dahai's journal to read because he intends to propose to her when she starts university. The Kims are eating supper and dreaming about marrying into a wealthy family, as a storm rages outside when the doorbell rings. Moon Guang claimed she forgot something in the basement after being dismissed and leaving hastily. While her family hides, Chung Su allows her in. However, Moon Guang is spending too long down there, so Chung Su goes to investigate. She sees Moon Guang attempting to lift a cabinet and assists her, uncovering a door beneath it that leads them to an underground bunker built by the architect and former owners. Oh Joan Se, Moon Guang's spouse, had been hiding there for years to avoid loan sharks. Moon Guang assisted him in moving there when the previous owner departed. The property was up for sale, and the parks needed to know about the bunker. Moon Guang would go down there and smuggle in some food for him while the parks weren't looking, which explains why Mr. Park believed she overate. She came today because she knew the parks would be gone, and she wanted to speak to Chung Suk alone to seek permission for her husband to continue living down there, even offering to repay her for bringing him food. Chung Suk refuses to accept this and pulls out her phone to contact the police, but her family falls down the steps while attempting to spy on them. Moon Guan wastes no time recording them with her phone catching on tape that they address each other by family names. Moon Grang and her husband now have control of the situation, threatening to reveal the park scam if the Cums do not comply. They all proceed upstairs, and the Cums are told to cower in a corner while Moon Guang and Join Say explore the home. Moon Guang even criticizes them for being pigs and creating a mess in the living room 
claiming they were always mindful of the architect's artistic touch when she and her husband used the home after the parks left. While she's giving them such a lecture, the Kims use the opportunity to attack the sofa and wrestle the couple to the ground for the phone. Kitty captures Juanse, and Keen dumps a bundle of peaches on Moon Guang, knocking her unconscious, while Kiwu steals the phone and deletes the videotape. Everyone pauses when they hear the home phone ring. Chung Su picks it up and is surprised to hear Mrs. Park asking her to prepare dinner since they'll be returning sooner due to the heavy storm making it difficult to continue their camping vacation. As soon as she hangs up, the entire family takes action. Chung Sook starts cooking. He -de takes Join Se to the basement and ties him up. Kiyun hides the trash under the furniture. Kiwu goes upstairs to return the diary after also taking an unconscious Moon Guang to the basement. Kiwu hides beneath Dai's bed, and Kiyun rolls under the table as the parks return just then. Moon Guan awakens and attempts to escape, but Chung Sook knocks her back into the cellar, causing her to fall and strike her head. Kiti holds her lifeless body to her husband, who is bashing his head against the light switches while following a Morse code guide posted to the wall. Da Song, a scout, expects to receive his message one day, but Kiti dismisses the concept before tying him to a pipe and departing. Mrs. Park tells Chung Sook about Da Song's horrific first grade experience. One night, he crept into the kitchen to steal his birthday cake and saw a ghost coming from the basement, who turned out to be Juan Se. This led him to have convulsions and foam at the mouth, which is why he has been in treatment ever since, and they are never home on his birthday. Meanwhile, Da Hai nearly finds Ki Wu beneath the bed, but she picks up her puppy and no longer explores. After the park couple retires to their bedroom, Kiwu and Kiti slip out into the living room to locate Kiyung to escape, but Desong shouts and comes downstairs, forcing the three of them to hide beneath the table. Desong wants to camp out in the garden in the rain, and his parents allow him, opting to sleep on the sofa to keep an eye on him. Now, the Kims must listen to the Parks whine about their smell and get flirtatious with one another. When the couple is finally sound asleep, the Kims leave the house and hurry through the rain to their neighborhood, flooded with sewage water. Their flat is also flooded, so they gather as many possessions as possible before spending the night in a nearby gymnasium that welcomes poor people who have lost their houses due to the storm. Kiwu embraces the scholar's rock with him while sleeping since he is disappointed to learn that his father does not have a strategy to deal with the issue they left in the basement. Back in the bunker, Moon Pan dies from the trauma she received earlier, and Join Se attempts to transmit a Morse code message to the lights, requesting assistance. Da Song notices and translates it, but it's gibberish. Juan Se needs the proper mentality to spell correctly. Therefore, he has a bloodied forehead. Mrs. Park decides to host an impromptu birthday celebration for Da Song the next day, and the Kims must put on their best welcoming faces to spite their sorrow over losing their house. Chung Sook must cook and set the tables outdoors, and Kiti must drive the parents about to get all the party goods. At the same time, they make faces at his smell, and the siblings must put on their clever teacher personalities since they have been invited to the party as essential guests. During the party, Mr. Park and Kitty dress up as Indians in preparation for a big performance to preserve Dasson's cake. After spending time with Dai, Kiwu takes the scholar's rock and falls to the basement, where he is leaped on by Joinse who has managed to free himself. After preventing Kiwu from running with a string around his neck, Joinse knocks him unconscious with a rock before leaving the bunker and taking a knife from the kitchen on his route to the garden party. 
Jonse stabs Kiyun in an attempt to get revenge on Moongwang. Desong has a seizure as soon as he sees him, while Da Hai discovers Ki Wu's corpse and drags him outside to seek help. Ki Deek rushes to check on her daughter, attempting to keep a hand on her wound to prevent it from bleeding, while Chung Suk attacks Join Se and murders him with a barbecue skewer. Mr. Park is unconcerned about any of his workers. He only wants to take his kid to the hospital. So he orders Kidik to drive him. But Kidik does not want to leave his family behind, so he tosses the keys at him, allowing him to drive himself. The keys fall to the grass, and Join Se collapses on top of them. Mr. Park goes to get them, but even in such a dangerous situation, he covers his nose while moving the corpse. Enraged by such heinous behavior, Kitik grabs the knife and murders Mr. Park before departing the scene. Weeks later, Ki Wu awakens following brain surgery. The injury and procedure have left his mind in a weak state, so he can't help but laugh through everything that happens to him. Finding out his sister is dead and his father is missing. Being arrested, being put on trial for fraud, and being allowed to leave on probation because of a traumatic incident for which they are not charged because it was self-defense. He only stops laughing when he watches the new story, which shows the now empty home, making everything that transpired seem more genuine. He and his mother have no idea where his father is, but the investigators continue to follow them, hoping to find him. Months later, when the press has moved on to other topics and the police have stopped following them, Kiwu travels up the mountain and spies on the park's home, which is now inhabited by a German family who purchased it because they were unaware of its past. There, Kiwu discovers someone is using the lights to transmit a Morse code message. His father, who has been hiding in the house bunker all along, he buried Moon Guang in the backyard and lived by plundering the kitchen at night. He also sends Mars signals daily, hoping his kid may notice them one day. Back in his old flat, where he still lives with his mother, Ki Wu sends a letter to his father, promising to work hard and save enough money to purchase the home and reconnect with him.